The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Good morning, West USA Realty. My name is Keith Flynn. I'm the director of digital marketing here at West USA. Uh, welcome, agents. Whether you're with West USA or you're not with West USA, we welcome all agents. Really excited to have you guys on another one of our social media webinars each and every Thursday morning. Thank you for being flexible and starting an hour later than we normally do. Uh, we will be back to 10 a.m. again next week, but I had to take care of some errands. So um, <clears throat> with that, we always... um. I want to say thank you to you guys. Really appreciate having you on. If you don't know whether it's your first time or your umpteenth time, uh, we do provide free webinars uh, each and every week. At least I know I do. We've got a lot of other uh, reputable folks here at West USA who host webinars. We had our Monday morning webinar on Wednesday. <clears throat> We've got some investment webinars and a lot of fun here. Each and all of our webinars are recorded. Uh, we host those on our YouTube channel. So if uh, you're not able, to, not able to make it the whole hour or need to jump off or you want to check out one of our past webinars on a myriad of different topics, whether it's uh, advertising, being an agent, um, the Monday morning webinars always have a lot of great relevant content that's uh, happening in the, in the universe right now. And so um, you can always check us out on our YouTube channel, West USA Realty. Of course, as we jump into the webinar this morning, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, compliments, you can always drop those right into the chat box there on your right-hand side. I'm in a live environment, so I'm able to answer those questions for you as we're rocking and rolling. Uh, I have an immensely boring slideshow for you today. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do have – it's all pretty much thought, uh, food for thought slideshow as we crank into this, uh, working through your personal brand. 
uh, what it means to be an agent and things you should think about when it comes to being an agent. And so um, you can always jump in the chat box, ask questions on the right hand side under handouts. You'll notice there is a personal branding worksheet, a little tangible for you guys. Go ahead and download that. Take that with you today. Um, as we crank into these slides here, we're going to ask some, I'm going to ask some questions of you or ask you to ask questions of yourself that will help you define your brand and really get you going. And whether you're a seasoned agent, you've been doing this for a number of years, or you're brand new to the industry, um, there's just a lot of value there for you guys. So, you know, approach this with an open mind. You know, the the, the universe is always changing. Uh, our climate, our, our industry is always changing. And so it's good to be versatile and uh, flex and pivot when you need to. All right, so let's get cranking and going here. Um, each and every week, I'm excited that, uh, you know, West USA, we have sponsors with us. We have industry vendors who support you guys as agents, help you guys get to where you need to be, navigate the real estate landscape. And so, uh, like always, I'm excited to have Jill St. Croix on. I think, Jill, this is your first time for the new year, correct? Have I said new year? It Happy is, new year? Keith. Hey! Happy, <laughs> Happy New Year! Yeah, how are you? So I'm good. It's still January, so I know I can still say that. So I'm doing fantastic. Um, you know, hanging in there. New year, new optimism, and um, excited to have you on. So how have you been? I've been awesome. Thank you so much. It's just been incredibly busy again, and loving every minute of it. And I have to tell you, Keith, this is one of my favorite classes that you teach. Thank you. Oh, I, I love the personal branding because when I meet with my clients, one of mm. the things that we talk about is how to brand them. And it's all about the colors, the fonts, the taglines, everything that, so when a flyer or a postcard comes in the mail or is at an open house, they go, oh my gosh, that's a Keith Flynn file, flyer. Let's ah. go look at that and see what he's got going on. Right on. So that's this awesome. is, I just, I adore this class. I just think it's just so powerful in helping agents really stand out and create their own, you know, their brand. If you think about red and white and polar bears automatically coca-cola why not have right. our agents be that memorable yeah you're absolutely right so what's new over at uh, great american title how are you guys uh, rocking the new year oh gosh we're just busy 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 um the the escrow officers are wonderfully busy and keeping everybody super happy people leave here happy our notaries are running in and out constantly and um, I'm actually being able to meet now one-on-one -on -one with, with clients again, which I'm thrilled about. That's and, awesome. Oh, I know. It's so nice to see faces again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But, you and I are overdue for some lunch. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Absolutely. George and Sons, right? Right. Um, exactly. <laughs> but loving every minute of it. We just love helping the clients. We've gotten some really fun things going with, you know, being so distant. We've had to change up a lot and pivot as, as, as we all have. But some of the stuff that my customer solutions department is turning out after my conversations with agents has been just really fun and phenomenal. And I think it's just putting a whole new spin on a lot of the things that we do. Right, right. Yeah. And, and, and when it comes to um, when it comes to, you know, being still active in the market, I mean, obviously all indicators are that 2021 is going to be pretty solid, just like 2020 was. So, um, you know, it's good to yep. have you guys out there supporting agents when you can, because there's a, there's just so much to being an agent. And so having, uh, having someone like yourself who's been in the industry for a number of years, you know, it's good to have an, and this peace of mind to go to bed at night knowing that you have that support. Yeah, actually, it's, I'm going on my 18th year. Wow. <laughs> and that's scary. <laughs> it is crazy. You know, I was just looking at the calendar. March will be six years that I've been with, with West USA. So it's, it, time yeah. has gone by so fast. Congrats. Yeah, I remember Thanks. when you first came on board. I was a newbie. I knew nothing. <laughs> you were a newbie, but you, you, you're you just amazing the way you pivoted with these classes, too. I can't wait to get back in the classroom with you with live classes so I can actually see people yes. um, and get reactions and everything like that. But my account information or my contact information is right there on the screen and love to talk with you. We can set up a Zoom. I can do one-on-one um, -on -one in house if you're comfortable with that. We're all masked in here and everything. but. Um, Still, it's it's great to be able to work with the agents and get this personal branding dialed in for them. Yeah, thank you, Jill. Appreciate that. And as always, thank you for taking a few moments out of your morning uh, to join us. And uh, I will chat with you soon. Okay. See you later, Keith. Thank you. Right. Take care, Joe. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Next up, uh, New Year, New You, Bree. Uh, Bree has uh, 
jumped over to a new home, no pun intended, or pun intended, and uh, always excited to have her back on with us to share what's happening. So um, not only uh, what's cracking new with you, Bree, but uh, tell us about Celebrity Home Loans. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, yes, so it is like a whole new year for me. Um, <laughs> I'm super excited, and it's actually um, a lot of new starts for me. Um, so I'm with the Robert Coomer Group with Celebrity Home Loans, and we are, nice. so Robert Coomer um, has, we're a division of Celebrity Home Loans. We've got over 80 loan officers and are licensed in 30 states, um, but we're expanding into Arizona right now. So got we're it. really coming in kind of with a bang. And the loan officers on our team are, I mean, amazing. I talked to somebody yesterday in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and you know, is working with some of the agents out there actually to, you know, kind of see if we can get some connections out there, if we can, you know, like, it's just amazing to have all of these um, just connections all over the country and right. everybody's super eager to, you know, really build and really work together to get things done. So it's been so much fun. Um, we are close time for loans is at three weeks right now, which okay. is awesome. Loving it. Um, so those are just kind of like the little things, you know, that people always want to know. I know, you know, we're definitely realistic that we're coming into the Phoenix market right now. So if anybody has questions, wants to kind of chat with us, get to know us a little bit, sure. definitely reach out to me. Cause you know, I know, I know a lot of the agents, but I want to introduce them to our loan officers so that they can kind of get to know them as well right now where else uh, where else is uh, robert coomer based out of or, or do they have other locations in the in the country um yeah so he actually um is based out of vegas nice um and then we have offices like i said in hawaii over in like texas and mm -hmm. i mean it's in florida um i believe colorado so there's i mean like all over the place Nice. So that is another thing that's a huge benefit is, you know, if you're looking for one of the things that I think is fantastic is if you're looking for somebody who's licensed in a different state, shoot me over an email because there's a very good chance that we have somebody who can, can who we can connect you with. Right, right. And especially with West USA, I mean, even though we uh, brokerage is in Arizona, we've got a lot. We're dealing with a lot of folks from out of the, out of the country, out of the state from coming in from all over. You know, Arizona is. An amazing melting pot of folks from all over because oh my uh, gosh absolutely right <laughs> you know i mean though it's been a little brisk and rainy lately though uh you know looking outside today it's just amazing weather so who doesn't want to live in arizona right now right <laughs> i know it's nuts it's like we're getting all of the seasons in a week <laughs> that's it leaves hit the ground we had snow on the, i'm looking out my window and i can see snow on the mountains because i live up north in the north valley and uh, uh -huh. it's just it's wicked, you know, because it's like not something they used to see. And now, of course, we'll be gone by the next few days. But <laughs> I know. But, you know, it's fun while it lasts. We saw just a quick little funny story. I was driving this weekend with my daughter and I looked at the, you know, the weather or the, they're not weather, but the um, things on the freeway that give you the warning signs, you know, oh, right, and right. It said winter. It was like winter storm warning. And I was like, does that say a winter storm warning? And my daughter goes, what's a winter storm? <laughs> and I was like, true. oh my gosh. Yeah. I need I'm... to go outside of Arizona. <laughs> We're heading up north uh, Saturday ourselves. We're going to Flagstaff Snow Park. So, um, you know, the kids are going to see snow for the first time and we're going to have some fun. So I'll bring you home Take a snow cone. so many pictures. I can't <laughs> wait to see them. Absolutely. I'll be on the grams for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bree, thank I'm excited you so for much. you and your new endeavor. Um, thank you for taking a moment this morning, and uh, we will chat with you soon. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. So personal branding. Guys, thanks for rocking with us here. If you're just joining in and you haven't heard uh, this morning, uh, when we started the webinar, you guys can download our personal branding worksheet there. It's in your panel on the right of your screen under handouts. Uh, just go ahead and hit that download tab there. That is a personal branding worksheet that we'll work through. I'll reference it a few times as we get through. Uh, you don't have to fill it out now. You know, there's a lot to think about today. So this is really just food for thought for you guys when approaching your personal brand. Um, uh, just, you know, just some really so some thoughtful things that will help you, you know, kind of get your feet, uh, your bearings on what it is to be an agent. Um, you know, you, you, guys have, um, you guys have done so much, you know, uh, when it goes into being a real estate agent. It's, uh, you know, it's important to take a look at all 
uh, all the effort you've put into it and, you know, the money you've spent, um, uh, you know, taking tests, becoming a licensed agent, you know, uh, uh, getting a website, getting your business cards, really just a lot to, to take in. You are the CEO, the CMO, the CFO, the marketing director, the accountant. You know, and you spend a lot of time getting your license and whether you're, again, seasoned or a new agent, um, if you don't really have a firm grasp of how to market yourself, I mean, all that is for nothing, really, because you're not able to get clients and get out there. You know, your your personal real estate brand is a reflection of you, uh, you know, your unique qualities, the value you bring. It's just not a matter of over, you know, of coming up with color schemes and logos and, and you know, uh you know, fun fonts and things like that. There's really a lot that goes into it. Um, it is being uh, unique to you as an agent. And it can remember too, it's very competitive right now, especially in the last year. Um, you definitely got a hustle, low inventory. So, uh, you know, you know, and of course, you know, thanks to the internet and, and, and video and uh, the widespread adoption of cell phones and having video cameras and video has become a huge component in the last year because it's really how we've been able to tell our story. We're not out and about shaking hands and doing open houses like we once were, obviously because of COVID. But um, it's an ever-increasing, um, you know, it, the internet and and social media is ever increasingly popular. And, and you know, using Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and and as a real estate playing field has really essentially uh, evolved considerably. And so there's just a lot to take in. Hope we will rock this out for you guys and you leave some value today. Uh, keep it to an hour. Not going to take up too much of your time, but Something I like to share, um, you know, we read Dr. Seuss books with my kids and one of my favorite quotes is, today you are you, that is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. And so, again, just on the, on the, on the topic of uniqueness and individuality, there's a, lot, there's a real big emphasis on why we need to put ourselves into a frame of mind where we need to think about our personal brand and what we're putting out there. And I know it's something that, you know, it, it's always evolving, uh, you know, you know, not getting sucked into negativity, not putting out um, a bad message because each and anyone who can qualify can be a potential client. And regardless of, you know, their political beliefs, uh, religion, you know, at the end of the day, we're in this business to get people into homes, uh, whether it's a first time buyer you know, or repeat buyer. You know, that's the most important thing, you know, to everybody. Money is green. So let's rock it. Right. So marketing versus branding. Putting out your content, get yourself marketing, uh, get yourself marketed out there. Um, just, you know, for those who may have never thought about it from this perspective, I'd like to approach this from a one-on-one topic. You know, marketing is about creating a demand for your product or service. Marketing builds people's interest in buying and encouraging people to take action to buy. So your marketing materials you put out there, who you are, what you do, why you do it, as that starts to take hold and your branding starts to become prevalent, starts to become word of mouth and shared with friends and family and, and, and colleagues and past clients. And so, you know, your branding is the image of your brand, your company, who you are as an agent. Some of your brand is created by you through the way you visually represent your product and service through your colors, your fonts, logos, visuals, and physical space. And that's your office, your, you know, your, your, whether your office is a mobile office because you're in a car, you know, um, or you're meeting at Starbucks or, you know, you're out and about. Um, so, you know, having those two broken down and another example here for you, side by side versus marketing versus branding, uh, you, you, this is you on the left marketing, right? You're telling people, Hey, I'm a trusted real estate professional. I'm a, I'm a neighborhood expert. I know the community. I know the values. I know nightlife shopping and so on. But as your marketing takes hold, then your branding starts to form. And now, uh, you've got folks who are telling you, Hey, I understand and hear that you are a trusted real estate professional, and that is your brand. That is the brand that you're putting out there. That is what you people, what pe you want people to remember about you, and what people say about you when you leave the room. You know that is your branding. So some components <clears throat> broken down here, some buzzwords, some things to think about when you're creating your marketing, your branding. On the left bubble there for branding, you know we're thinking of things like our name, our voice. When we say our voice, is like how, how, what's our message? What is how are we? putting our voice out there, uh, what's the takeaway we want from folks to uh, get from our branding and our marketing? Um, your logo, your tagline, if you've got one, um, I'm sure we've all heard um, you know, taglines from other uh, notable agents in the market out here. 
your expectations. What are the expectations that you want to set for yourself that you're going to share with your clients? Of course, then yes, your fonts, your colors, you know, things that you want to use to have a cohesive branding and marketing piece. The premises, of, uh, the promises you have, and then uh, visual styling, your personality. You know, who are you? Like, what is it about you that is your wow factor? What is it about you that make that gravitates or attracts people to you? Um, and of course, your reputation is important as well. Uh, that's a big one, especially in today's digital age. Uh, our reputation can go south really quick because people can get the message out there a lot faster. A great example of that reputation is, you know, I remember back in the day when there was no social media and you'd go see a movie. You know, it'd take three, four weeks for the word of mouth to get out that the movie was terrible. And now we've got people literally in the movie theater um, cranking out on their Twitter account or on social media that, oh my God, this movie's terrible. And so it really forced movie companies, movie uh, uh, production companies to up their game when it comes to quality of movies because, you know, it, it, word of mouth took a while so they could at least take in some ticket or some ticket revenue. But now, you know, we're finding out <laughs> before the before the popcorn <laughs> even turns cold that the movie is terrible. On the marketing side, the bubble right there for you. Things to think about campaigns, you know, whether you're running any Facebook advertising or print uh, door hangers, direct mailers, uh, inbound and outbound. How are you handling your leads, advertising in like general, uh, any offers you may have or, um, you know, friends and family. Uh, your, your channels. So we'll get into that about too. Like, where should you be as an agent? Where am I going to be advertising? Where should I be at least be putting out my content um, to give myself a digital presence? Your promotions, if you have any, not really relevant too much. We're not running like, you know, buy one, get ones <laughs> in the real estate market, but uh, media, how you handle your media, where you're putting out your content. Again, sales calls, uh, you know, obviously you're, you're, you know, dial and smile, cranking your leads into your CRM, moving those through the sales funnel. And then your CEO and your uh, your SEO, sorry, uh, your search engine optimization for you folks who do have a robust website with an IDX or MLS integration into it, and leads. You know where are you getting your leads from when you're marketing? Uh, how are your how is your marketing efforts getting you those leads? So those are some definitely things to think about. So creating some value around your personal brand. What are the benefits that you could look forward to as you're putting out great content? Uh, a steady stream of ideal clients. I mean, that's foremost, most foremost is what you want to have is a steady stream of not only ideal clients, but qualified clients. Those are the ones that we really want to get you know, into our wheelhouse. Those are coming to the table who are uh, already have pre-qualified, already know what we're dealing with as far as the dollar amount, have an idea of where we want to live. Most importantly, rewarding part, you'll be rewarded with partnerships. Um, and those partnerships come in the way of vendors, you know, working with uh, vendors within the organization, within the industry for West USA or for whatever brokerage you're at and having strong partnerships because you know you're working with very intelligent and capable folks from those vendors who will work with you. And of course, you being um, a strong brand, they'll be attracted to you as well because you're someone who's you know getting things done and you're bringing in leads and you're selling homes and helping your clients. And so naturally that, that would help with partnerships. Leadership opportunities is a big one. We've got a number of our top agents here at West USA who contribute to mastermind panels, speaking events, you know, not as much as we used to, you're not out there doing the old lunch and learn things, unfortunately, as we once were, but we've all pivoted and taking advantage of technology and using webinars. And we're still doing and bringing a lot of our top agents in to speak with uh, us on webinars and share and give back what works for them, <clears throat> how they've navigated their career over the years, and obviously helping out any new agents with brokerage. Great uh, mind share, greater mind share. You know, you're able to get in the room with like-minded people, and they'll want to be in the room with you, so you can collaborate and obviously be a well-rounded and more successful agent. Uh, association with your market niche, right? Associ uh, getting in with um, anybody within your neighborhood community, nonprofits, your charitable um, offerings. If you have small business owners, uh, getting in with your um, the people who support your community, having a better understanding, and they see your brand, so naturally they'll, they'll want to hitch up with you as well. Greater credibility is a big one too when it comes to personal brand. Um, you know, having having a, a great reputation and being someone who's known as a strong agent who can navigate and get people to close quickly and for full ask or over. <laughs> Recognition and prestige, obviously that's a big when it comes to having a great personal brand. And then overall, you'll have a higher perceived value when folks are considering you as a real estate agent.
for them and representing them in their process. So a brand is not a logo. When someone says, what is a brand? You know, oh, they think of, you know, as Jill mentioned earlier at the webinar, Coca-Cola, right? We think of a brand. Brand is more than a logo. It's more than BMW. It's more than uh, any of the large retailers that you see out there. A brand is a collection of perceptions in the mind of your consumer. As I mentioned, what are they saying when you leave the room? What do they think about you? They're not on the call or after they've engaged with you in a, in a transaction. Um, you know, do they like you? Do they want to be with you? And there are a lot of things that are taken into consideration um, when it comes to evaluating your personal brand. And so uh, I put together this little quick chuckle interlude here. Brands, logos, and slogans slogans were honest. Uh, what brands put out there and then what their taglines are. These are pretty funny. Uh, actually, this is what we, we, we've come to understand or what we think of a brand. Uh, Nature Valley granola bars. Crumbles everywhere. <laughs> um, there's some funny ones here I just wanted to add to you guys. Hot Pockets, every bite is a different temperature. Is that not true? If you're like me and you grew up in the 80s, uh, when Hot Pockets first hit the market, you could not find a consistent Hot Pocket. It was either that or the microwave. We're not really sure what was making it all worse. But Instagram, mask bad photos with filters. Yep, I've taken a few bad photos in my day, and I've been sure to use a filter or two to make it look artistic. Uh, WebMD, give yourself... Uh, convince yourself that you have terminal illness. I'm actually bad about this. I go to WebMD, you know, and, you know, hey, I got this going on. Oh my God, I have Ebola and tur tuberculosis. <laughs> Old Spice smells like grandpa. Uh, my favorite, yes, of course, Lay's been getting one over on us for a number of years. It's nothing but flavored air. Certainly no need to have a bag that big when the lower third is where the chips live, right? All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a quick smile this morning. Back to you thinking about your brand. Your brand is uh, your strategy. How are you approaching um, your business? You know, if you're offering something to a client, if you're offering something to an agent, why they're going to work with you, your brand is your strategy. How are you approaching your marketing efforts and how you approach the strategy of um, going through the contract, getting initial uh, uh, in a letter offer out? Um, how you communicate is important too. Your call to action, uh, number two there on the right. Your calls to action, uh, what you're putting out there when you have your uh, your social media advertising, your videos, anything that you have in the way of um, uh, content being seen by your audience. Are you telling them what you want them to do? Call me or email me if you or someone you know is looking to purchase a home in the next six months to a year. Uh, click on the link below if you'd like to learn more about free home evaluation for your neighborhood. Uh, you know, Here's the recent home sales in the area. Uh, interested to find out what your home's worth? Click on the link, e email me below, call my number, um, message me here, just send a direct message. We want to be putting call to actions in to let people what them let them know what you want them to do. Your customer service is another big one too when it comes to your brand. How are you handling calls? Are you responsive within you know five ten minutes? Uh, do you set your clients' expectations? Look, I work better through text message, and we'll get on calls when it's there's a lot of information to exchange or I'm email driven. People are gonna communicate differently and so if you're setting those expectations up, your customer service is a big part of that as well. The way you speak to people, are you monotone? Are you someone who doesn't really have any voice inflection and just talks like this? That could be a turnoff for some people. Or on the opposite end, you could be you know, someone who's extremely excited and always over the top and that can turn people off too. God knows I've you know sent a few people on their way before because I'm a little animated and sometimes get really excited. So, you know, finding that person who you're going to have rapport with or a client that's going to have rapport with you based on the way you speak with them. Uh, there's a wide array of communication tools in your business when it's your yard signs, your uh, open house signs on the corner. You know, are your, are your signs beat? Have they been ran over a few times, uh, kicked over, thrown out in the middle of the road? Uh, you know, those say a lot about you. You know, has the sun gotten to them? Because we know the Arizona sun can fade everything. Um, and so, you know, you, those are oh, uh, considered <clears throat> part of your communication tools. Are you, you know, do you have a nice little acrylic sign that sits on the center island? Maybe you step in to use the restroom real quick in an open house. You know, do you have a nice little sign or is it just a Sharpie written on a piece of paper? You know, there's always ample opportunities for you to put a good brand out there, brand yourself, uh, you know, up your game a little bit. 
know, have a nice sign that hangs on the door if you're you know, on a call or whatever you need to do, you know, use those communication tools and make sure they're consistent throughout your branding. Uh, your people, you know, if you're on a team, we've got a lot of teams here at West USA Realty, a lot of folks on those teams. And though you are on that team with them, they represent your brand as well, just as much as you are a representation of their brand. So it's twofold. There's a two-way door there. Are you working with people who are going to help you get to where you be, but also, you know, leave a good impression with your clients? And that falls with, you know, working with your vendors as well. Uh, your home inspection, your uh, home warranty, after the fact, if you're buying them a home warranty as a closing gift, you know, are you partnering with the right home warranty company that's going to have great customer service? Because again, they're a reflection of you because you're offering that as part of the transaction. Um, you know, landscaping contractor, um, you know, home organizer, anybody who's going to come in and professionally help do photography, you know, this person's in their house. Are they, are they wearing booties? Are they wearing a mask? You know, there's a lot of things that go into that, that you should be taking into consideration when choosing these people to represent you in the process. Your facilities is important too. You know, you may not have an office or you do have an office with the West USA. Rest assured, all of our branches are beautiful well maintained um but you know your facilities can be you know you choosing a location to meet your clients you know um you know good part of town uh, clean uh, facility your open houses are a great one too if you're in an open house that house is your facility for the day or for that few moments of your day go around the house make sure you check behind the toilet for creepy crawlies you know uh, toilets flush nobody's been in there using the bathroom you know everything's wiped down all the lights are on you know so we don't have to touch anything cuz God forbid we have to touch anything in 2021 right now. Uh, you know, so your, that says a lot about your brand as well. Of course, yes, your logos, are, your visuals are part of your brand. The colors you choose, the fonts you select, um, they do matter. But obviously, there's a lot of other things that I wanted to give you guys as food for thought that come with your personal brand as well. So if you're not branding yourself, you can rest assured that others are doing it for you. So what does that mean, right? If I'm not branding myself, but someone else is, um, it's true. You know, if you're not in control of your digital footprint, the content you're putting out there and, uh, you know, you have people doing reviews for you, you're hopefully you're asking for reviews, but your clients are reviewing, you the working with you, they're reviewing the things that they've, they've experienced with you. You know, if you're not putting, um, your, uh, you're not controlling your brand, uh, there's a strong chance that others can for you as well. And again, it's very competitive out there, as I mentioned, you know, real estate is, uh, has never been com more competitive than it is right now. And so if someone, uh, you know, has worked with you in the past or, you know, I've heard some, you know, disparaging comments before about new agents. Um, but if you're putting out uh, good content, controlling the message, showcasing that you are a knowledgeable agent and, and giving examples why, it's important. So this little example here, and I don't know if you guys remember from probably the, what, early 2000s. Uh, Mac and PC used to go back and forth quite a bit. Mac, Apple, Apple did a great job of branding PCs. They had this commercial where the guy on the left, he would come out and he's like, hi, I'm a PC. And then the young guy on the right would come out and say, hi, I'm a Mac. And, you know, then they would use some analogy of like, you know, he's bloated and a large uh, unit. He's a huge tower. Uh, you know, Macs or Apples are more, you know, like a streamlined and all in one unit. And so there was a number of commercials that Mac and PC did back in the day where Apple came out and said, you know, this is what PCs are. They're bulky, they're slow, they're expensive or whatever, you know, that was the rub for buying one. Apple was the one putting that out there and did a really good job of, you know, branding what PCs were. And PCs really weren't doing much in the way of countering that. And so that's the example here is what is happening here. If you're not branding yourself, chances are someone else is. So again, just another reason why you guys should be in control of your brand and putting some effort into it. You know, it's it's a big piece of who you are. Um, and, and if someone wants to go do their homework and learn more about you and there's just nothing really out there, um, you know, it's not going to help you out. and certainly not going to help you set yourself apart from your competition. So the three W's of personal branding in real estate. Um Number one, what is in it for me? These are great questions to ask yourself or to ask yourself of, of what you think your clients are looking for. You know, get into the target client's mind and understand how you can solve his or her pain point. 
what is it about uh, what they're looking for, if there's something unique about a neighborhood or an area with low inventory, or if they're looking for a ranch style house, or you specialize in uh, investment, flipping, probate, whatever uh, you're passionate about, whatever it is about your real estate um, differentiation that you can share with your clients. You get into the mind and ask yourself, all right, this is what they're looking for. How can I be that or am I that for them? What value do you bring to the table? And what is the benefit of you? What is what is the benefit of using you over somebody else? And whether you, um, you know, you've know, you been an agent for a number of years or you focus on a specific portion of the real estate industry, uh, make sure that that's coming through. And you're reminding your audience, you know, every quarter that this is who you are and why they should use you as an agent. Who cares, right? The who cares test. When you're creating content, there should be a reason and a, and a value add. The four E's, I've got a, um, a blog that we wrote, four E's of content creation, uh, you know, empowering, educate, entertain, and I always forget the third one. <laughs> I always forget the third one. Um, creating high value content is important. Things that people are going to take away from the content. You know, it's fun to have, it's good to have fun, you know, show it something interesting about yourself. Are you a hiker, biker, you, arts and crafts, singer, dancer, you know, uh, you are a brand, you are a person and, and a genuine human being. And when that comes through on your social media, great. But remind your clients on why they should use you and the value that you can add when it comes to your content is important because they'll remember that content. And whether they're looking to buy now or they know someone who is, they're going to look for your content and they're going to watch your content and remember you the next time they have a need. You know, content needs to be relevant, timely and memorable. So obviously it's relevant to use a real estate agent. It's something that they're not just going to thumb over real quick because it was, you know, something arbitrary about, you know, uh, you know what whatever lunch you're eating at the time unless you're doing a review on a small business owner or a restaurant in the area which you certainly should be doing and i'll talk more about that in a minute here or um you know if you're going to share on social media make it meaningful and timely not just generic you know put some time and effort into it because people will actually take that away uh and remember that and they you see that okay you've really thought about this and um they learn something from it which is a good education one as well what's your wow factor this is a big one what um what is it about you that differentiate yourself from your competition? What do you bring to the table that nobody else is bringing? Uh, the wow factor can highlight um your wow factor. What your wow factor can you highlight about that makes you stand out from the crowd? And then of course, are you the ultimate foodie? Like if you're someone who's into food or I'm a foodie, uh, you know, start a restaurant review blog or or um you know uh, something that you're passionate about. Because there's a lot of other people out there who have that same passion and interest as you do. And, of course, they're going to have a need or want to have uh, – uh, may have a need to purchase a home. And so if you're someone who jumps into that area or that arena and you're putting out content, they're going to see naturally that you're an agent at some point. Um, but they're obviously going to uh, be gra – they're going to gravitate towards you and then that's an opportunity for you to build a relationship. Five questions to ask yourself when you're creating – your brand or reviewing your brand and pivoting, uh, what are your goals? You know, for you personally, what is it about you that, uh, what about your goals that you want to attain, attain? If you're looking to grow a team or move to, um, you know, another area of the state, you start working on, you know, Northern Arizona or Tucson, um, you know, what are the goals then have those written out? Because as they've said, you know, if you, uh, if you don't have your goals written down, then it's just a wish. What do you value? What is it about you, the, the real estate industry that you value the most? And of course, what are you passionate about? What motivates you and what makes you remarkable? Just kind of reemphasizing the last slide there. What are you passionate about when it comes to being an agent? How are you conveying that through your content creation? So five steps to building your brand. Um, number one there, obviously, well, of course, take inventory. Number two, those keep building your brand on that worksheet. Keep working that worksheet, um, you know, save a copy, create a copy of it and leave one blank as your master, go back in there, hold them side by side and keep evaluating building your brand. You know, building a lasting and effective personal brand takes time and there's no one size that fits all process. Each and every one of us is a different person and a different company, a different brand. But when I say take inventory there, number one, that's just look around you and see who, um, uh, who's around you that possesses certain skills and traits that can help you get to where you need to be. Um, you know, if you ask anybody, um, you know, anyone who's who's been successful in life 
and they and they tell you that they did it all by themselves, they'd be lying to you. That's not the case. They've always relied on somebody else. They've reached out to their people, which is fine, but be sure to reach out to somebody else you see who has a skill set or trait. You know, I like to help folks with their digital marketing. I like to help folks with navigating how to, you know, technically use something as well as tactics, strategies, ideas, uh, outside the box kind of things, which is great. And of course, give back. Make sure you give back. If there's something about you that can help somebody else, give back. That way we can all do this together. Uh, of course, number two, keep building your brand through your worksheet. Number three, create and craft an identity. Um, you know, build a persona. Get out and shoot some great stock photos of yourself in action. You know, get a little dressed up, put on some nice clothes. Head into a model home at one of our new builds or any of the new builds in the valley. Take a camera with you with a tripod on an off day when it's slow, not a lot of foot traffic maybe. Hop in there and do some selfie shots where you're, you know, standing in the kitchen. The great thing, this is a great little tip I heard from one of our agents. They go in there every now and then to a new build, shoot some new branding pieces, some new marketing photos, uh, and then they use it for their content. You know, motivational Monday quotes. Uh, you know, three tips to this, and then it's a shot in them in the in the kitchen. These homes are so beautifully staged that you know you're, the consumer, the client doesn't need to know that that's not technically your listing, but you're putting yourself in a really neat environment that just screams real estate. And uh, it's an awesome opportunity for you to create a really cool persona for yourself. Um, choose the right tools and channels. I'll get in that in a second here, but choosing the channels where you should be, Instagram, Facebook, and so on. Measure and repeat. Uh, don't just set it and forget it. It will unravel on you. So it's important to take a look at what you have in place and change and manipulate it and, and not manipulate it, but you know, massage it, <laughs> alter it, because uh, it is an ever-changing client climate, and it's important that you are flexible and able to do the same. So one of the biggest questions I get from a lot of agents is, hey, hey, you know, where should I be? Where should I? Should I be on Facebook? Should I be on Instagram? If I were only going to do one, what should I do? And I put the question back on them. Where Where is your clients, right? Where am I? Most importantly is where's your audience? Where do you want to be? Do you want to be with millennials? Do you want to, are you targeting retirees, people who are, you know, uh, going from a large home, downsizing? It really just depends on the client you're looking for. Most people are like, hey, I'll take anybody <laughs> right now, right? <laughs> Any Anybody who's qualified, I'm good to go. Where is your audience? Reverse engineer your audience. Figure out who uh, your target is and where they are. So if you're, again, looking for millennials, um, your 30 crowd is going to be primarily on Snapchat and Instagram. Um, you know, there's, last I saw, it was near 60% of Instagram users are millennials. They are your largest first-time home buyer. Um, they are going to be on Instagram. They are watching influencer videos, TikToks, Snapchat. They are consuming, uh, you know, of course now you may or may not know this, but a lot of folks are cross posting their content from their TikTok onto Instagram. <clears throat> and so there's a lot of, uh, you know, strong qualified buyers on there too. Statistically it's shown to Instagram users are a, a higher educated and higher income earner. So uh, that's a qualified buyer in my book. This stat has changed just a little bit, but did you know it's actually upwards of 30% now, a little maybe 35% of real estate agents, licensed realtors in the country are even using Instagram. There's a lot of room on there, a lot of audience, and there's just not all our agents are on there using it. So great opportunity for you guys to get on there and start um, using that as a way to build your brand. If you're targeting the 40 plus demographic, myself included, we're on Pinterest. I'm, I'm on Instagram too, but Pinterest is a real big one. Highly visual app, real estate being highly visual. Those two are a good fit. You know, social media in general is a great fit for, for real estate because as you guys know, as agents, first impressions are everything. And so putting out awesome photography, high res images, and you're out and about and you're doing that when it comes to real estate. But Pinterest is a great place for uh, 40 plus to be on there right now. And of course, last one, over 55, the fastest growing demographic on Facebook. A lot of boomers are retiring, slowing down, wanting to keep connected with friends, family, photos, except for my mom, can't get her on there, refuses to go on to uh, Facebook. And of course, I'm always sending text messages to the kids. <laughs> All right. So when you're considering your channels, there's a lot of places you could be. It could be on websites, uh, Twitter, great micro blog there, podcasts, really big up and coming when it comes to uh, creating a brand voice, 
voice activation, uh, you know, hey, uh, hey Siri, hey Lexus, um, you know, as, as my phone and my home device all ask me what. <laughs> um, there are people putting out podcasts. Podcasts are a huge play right now. Um, it actually, it's shown statistically that people consume more podcasts by hour than any other social media. And it's just a way for us to pop the earbuds in, go for a hike, go for the gym, head shopping, listen to what's new and greatest. A lot of agents using podcasts, not only to create a great brand for themselves, but establish trust and, and, and likability, credibility, um, and doing a five to 10 minute podcast. They don't need to be large hour long productions where you invite somebody in to interview them. Podcasts are a great way for you guys to, you know, share three to five minute uh, clips of, you know, what's happening in the market, things that are changing. And so some people not good typers, some people don't like to write, but if you're somebody who could tell a good story, you can, you can, you can speak it. Podcasts are a great play for you guys. Social media networks, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Certainly should be working all those to some degree, but if you're starting off on social media, pick one that's going to work best for you. Get your feet bearing, get your, bear, your feet rooted in, get bearings on where, what you need to be doing as far as consistency and content creation. And once you're, you feel good about one platform, you can move on to the next. A big play for you guys, Facebook events. Um, great for open houses, virtual open houses, especially uh, even before COVID. This is was a, was a fantastic play. Uh, even still now, Facebook events, when you create a Facebook event off of your Facebook business page, they are geared on the local area. So, you know, someone jumps on the Facebook events and is looking at, you know, uh, upcoming things that are happening in the, in the neighborhood. They can take a look at not only those events, but your open house will pop in there as well. And especially if the open house is keyed off of a specific neighborhood and others in the area when they're on Facebook will see that there's an open house. And, and now with uh, COVID, folks are doing virtual open houses. Um, and that's whether you guys going live and doing an open house via video of the listing uh, in the home and doing a walk and talk, or a big play for folks right now is doing open houses via their home. Uh, I have a webinar where we talk about virtual listings and virtual uh, open houses. Taking all your photos, all your video, all the content about that listing itself, putting it into a folder on your desktop device, and then uh, going live from Facebook Live. But you can share your screen. You can share your screen, open up that folder, and then take people through an open house in a live environment. You've got people jumping into your chat box there. Uh, they're watching the video. And as they join the live video, you know, hey, hey Keith, uh, thanks for joining. We're going to do a live open house here uh, in a few moments. Uh, you know, how are things going with you? Uh, hey, Bill. Hey, Nancy. As they join the chat, engage them in a conversation. Welcome them to the video feed. Let them know what's going to be happening and then go right into your open house like you would if there was a couple right behind you. Um, and you're showcasing the house. And then the great thing about a live environment is you can go back into that video that will live on your Facebook page later, and you can direct message or DM those individuals and follow up with them, start those conversations, build the relationships. And after the end of the day, that's what really what real estate is about is creating relationships, get them into your CRM and start building those relationships and building a, a network. Google my business. That was the last one. That was a big one. Are you on Google by business? Have you gone to Google and created a business listing for your real estate business? Now, granted, you are mobile. You're not technically out of a brick and mortar location. Um, so the nice thing is now Google my business allows you to create an area or a service area, much like if you were Terminex or, you know, a, 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 I think a roto router, <laughs> a plumbing company. Uh, where, you know, people aren't walking into your brick and mortar location and shopping like a traditional retailer. You can now establish a service area and then still just use your house, which is not listed, won't show up. People aren't going to be knocking on your door looking to see a home. But you can now choose an area, a service area, so you don't actually have to have a physical location. But that's important because if you have a Google My Business listing on Google and people are doing a search for you and learning about you, great place for them to find out more and do a review for you after the fact or after the transaction. So for you guys who are looking at Instagram, just to becoming a real estate influencer, uh, that word influencer, if you haven't heard it, get used to it. It's a big one when it comes to Instagram. 
Millennials are on Instagram. They're watching what influencers are doing on Instagram. Millennials are more apt to make a buying decision based on what they have seen from an influencer on Instagram as opposed to any other traditional advertising. They're not really susceptible to traditional TV ads, print ads, and so on, because uh, they're just not really looking there. Millennials are much uh, are, are more on uh, Instagram than any other platform. And, um, you know, learning about new products. Last I heard, 60% of folks who were uh, surveyed said that they actually learned about a new product or service via in, uh, Instagram. So as, you, as you've probably been on there, you've seen a lot of ads, a lot of new stuff, music, songs, services, uh, products, hats, T-shirts, you name it. And so definitely advantageous for you as an agent to be on there. Great place to establish trust. Show you're likable. If you're using Instagram the right way, and I have a, we just did it last week, Instagram Basics, uh, creating a great content. People see you're likable. That's someone I want to work with. That's someone that I want to have represent me in my transaction. Uh, you're, you can establish yourself as an expert on there. Great opportunity for you guys to you know, do a feature video post or a post about a historical neighborhood. Maybe you don't have a listing right now. You can still give off the impression that you are a knowledgeable agent by showcasing so many lovely neighborhoods that we have here in the Arizona market. And um, you know, use that as a as a uh, as a as a um, tool for you in your branding efforts, and you know, establish yourself as a neighborhood mayor. You know, hey, I know this neighborhood. Here's uh, Betty who owns the small pizzeria down the street. What's their number one menu item? You know, and do a little feature post on them, showcasing again that you are a knowledgeable agent. All right, we're almost in the home stretch here, guys. Hang in there with me. I know we're uh, almost at twelve o'clock. And I'm hungry. I'm sure you are too. All right. So dues as an agent, when you're building your brand, some things to consider about uh, what you should be focusing on. Audit what people or other companies see or read about you. We just talked about Google My Business, and so people are going to go do a search for you. Check on, um, on you know, check yourself out. Have you ever, ever Googled yourself? This is a great one. Um, Google yourself and find out what comes up. You know, what social media profiles are can be seen. Uh, what people might be learning about you and have control over that, and, and it, which is considered reputation, uh, managing your reputation. Search yourself on Google. And the cool thing you can do is set up an alert. Uh, I have a lot of alerts set up for my name, my full name, my name with my company, my name with you know past companies. And if anyone ever posts anything about you that has your name in it or whatever your search result is, Google, once you set the alert up, will send you an email notification and let you know that something on the internet with your name on it just became available. And so after the fact, um, you have a, a, a better control over your name and any images that pop up, especially if someone's doing a review, whether good or bad, I would imagine you'd want to respond to that and be engaged and set those alerts up to notify you that if your name pops up, you'll be good to go and you'll at least know what's happening, uh, especially if you're someone who contributes to the industry, either in video form, written articles, and so on. Uh, associate yourself with strong brands. Get in with those big companies. Get in with those companies that have a great reputation. You know, engage with your vendors. Uh, have them and leverage them for your content as well. Look, they want to be just as much involved with the industry as you do. Start getting them in on your content. Um, people who are apprehensive about video, I always tell them, interview somebody and just have the camera be a, an eyeball in the room. And then use that for content creation. Uh, engage with positive online communities, charities, nonprofits. Shout out to West USA Cares. February is uh, Giving Awareness Month. And so each and every year is our annual thing where we have our agents give back. Uh, they donate their money. And then we have a lot of nonprofits that we work with in the Valley. And, um, and agents give back in that respect. So whatever, you, whatever you're passionate about, reach out. Again, that will establish you as a neighborhood mayor. You could be considered a connector with your community by finding out what these charities are in need of and then rallying the troops and being involved again building relationships and meeting people uh, join a closed facebook group or start one for your neighborhood if you can find a neighborhood that doesn't have one i would be all over that closed groups are a great great way for the community to connect on a hyper niched local level and again that's what being an agent is all about so definitely consider that when you are building your brand stand out without selling out just some things you know doesn't always have to be about real estate uh, create great content high value content as i mentioned before so that people look for your content be consistent not constant if you're going to do it on a monday and a wednesday and a friday 
always do it on a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. So people are conditioned to look for your content. You know, I don't have a need to be a, 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 for a home right now, but Keith always puts out great content about three best splash pads in the summertime within a 10 mile radius of my neighborhood or, you know, a great outdoor patio seating um, that's dog friendly. And you can put those little highlights out there, again, establishing yourself as a neighborhood mayor. Uh, become more than just a realtor. Be a connector uh, in the community. And, you know, be the in-the-know agent. That's one of the great things about dues is do, uh, being an in-the-know agent because, hey, he always knows, like, what that new restaurant's going to be or he always knows what's going to be built there in the next six months. All right, so don'ts. Real quick, don't get cocky. Uh, it's great to hustle. Stay humble. Uh, try not to toot your own horn too much on your social media. Stay away from giving yourself any of those weird kitschy labels like a guru or a ninja uh, when it comes to being an agent. Just be straightforward, genuine with folks when it comes to creating your content. I know we all try to be fun and funny, but uh, you know, keep it keep it straight. Keep it forward on your Instagram and social media in general uh, about what you do and how you do it. Uh, proof's in the pudding, right? Um, do not post sensitive material. Now, uh, I, I see this a lot sometimes when like you're at closing or, you know, uh, like your client signing something, just be mindful that your photo can't be zoomed in on. Um, and they can't see anything specific. You know, it should be a no brainer, but it happens. Uh, avoid holding up the key. This is a crazy one with technology. Avoid holding up the key in the photo. If it's a clean shot, there's technology out there now where they can uh, take a screenshot of that key and replicate a copy uh, it is a trip, but it happens. And I've heard about it. So be mindful about not posting any sensitive material. Uh, don't be the friend who overshares. Uh, if you get run off the road by some jerk, that's great. Probably don't take a photograph of his license plate and post it on <laughs> all over social media. Keep off the personal drama. I know this climate is crazy. I have been subjected to it. I have been guilty of it. I'm trying to do better for 2021. I've made that commitment to myself, um, but stay away from getting sucked into any of the personal drama or any of the classics, much like you're in an interview, personal, religion, um, you know, uh, sex, orientation, drugs, things like that. Just try to put your best foot forward. And if it means you have to have two different social media accounts, get it. Have a professional for your business and have a personal one that's locked down and you're very controlled about who you allow in. And resist compulsive, uh, compulsively attaching uh, your your opinion to posts on every conversation. Uh, again, are you adding value? If not, then avoid it. Try not to be negative. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is your presence on social media is a highly conspicuous part of how you market yourself to the world. It's what gets you to stand out, what differentiates you from your competition. Last year, I put together a couple of recommended apps for you guys to help you with your branding, help you up your game. I just did a Canva class last week. Um, Canva for real estate professionals. Jump on our YouTube channel. Canva, uh, third one down there. My favorite, free. There's some other cool apps like Word Swag, five bucks a month. Still pretty good uh, to be able to add some cool text over your content, as you see there on the right. Um, Adobe Spark is another cool one that uh, is popular. PixArt is a fun one, and Typorama. These are just really cool graphic overlays, fonts. Uh, if you want to send a message for your image, you can download those apps and add that to your tool belt of marketing. And I uh, highly recommend that. It will help you up your game um, when it comes to creating content uh, at, at speed. Of course, I'm on social media. If you haven't figured that one out, <laughs> uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, you name it. Love for you to follow me. Happy to follow you back. Um, love to see what you guys are putting out there. I'll be sure to engage, like, comment, and share. Love for you to do the same. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, email me after the fact. I'm Keith, K-E-I-T-H, at WestUSA.com. Happy to help out. Uh, next week, new month. Can't believe we're already getting into February. This is crazy. Next Thursday, 10 a.m., I'll be doing Facebook basics, getting your business page created, getting you off and running, navigating Facebook. They have had a lot of changes in the last several months and they're always changing because that's just social media and the world we live in. But hey, that's job security and I love it. But as always, uh, be kind, be safe out there and we will see you guys next week. Have a great one.